story at 5 o'clock, what led to the Key Bridge collapse? Federal investigators now focusing on the ship's electrical system as responders work to dig out pieces of that bridge embedded in the bottom of the Patapsco River. Hello, everybody. I'm Rick Ritter. And I'm Nikki Zizaza. Welcome to those of you watching on CBS News Baltimore and on WJZ TV. Now, the chair of the National Transportation Safety Board says the circuit breakers and the cargo ship's power system are a major focus of investigators tonight. Yeah, it's a big development now as we have also just learned more about salvage and recovery efforts from the Unified Command. Let's go right to WJZ investigator Mike Helgren, live in your corner in Dundalk with new information tonight. Mike. Nikki, Rick, we just got some more specific numbers. We learned that the Unified Command wants to remove 178 of the more than 4,700 containers that are on board the Dolly. So far, they've been able to remove 34 of them. Some of those containers weigh more than a ton each. And as you said, we're hearing from the NTSB chair as her agency hones in on the Dolly's electrical system. Our role is to determine what happened, why it happened, to prevent it from reoccurring, and we are still on scene on the vessel. NTSB Chair Jennifer Hamadi told lawmakers her team is focused on the electrical system of the Dolly, the massive cargo ship that slammed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge two weeks ago. Video of the incident shows the Dolly appearing to lose power. Experts from Hyundai, which made the electronics, are working to determine what, if anything, malfunctioned. We have had the manufacturer. Uh, of, of uh, equipment in the engine room uh, to look closely at the electrical power system. Uh, we're continuing to look at that. Uh, we've asked for additional assistance from the manufacturer who returned from overseas this week with experts to look at the circuit breakers. Hamandi says she expects her agency's preliminary report to be released by the end of May. And I don't care about me. I care about the six workers on that bridge, their families. I care about our investigators. I care when there's not a backup to them and they're on duty 24-7. New 3D imaging shows part of the bridge collapsed to the very bottom of the 50-foot channel. Hamandi called on the federal government to look at peer protection for vulnerable bridges so this does not happen again. If I were a state that would, and the Department of Transportation, that's what I would be looking at now. Are these bridges uh, protected for the types of traffic that is going, uh, going through now? As WJZ saw firsthand while embedded with the U.S. Coast Guard this week, work is being done to stabilize and remove containers. We are literally talking thousands of tons. The governor says 34 containers have been taken off the ship, and some of the Patapsco River floor will have to be dredged to remove pieces of the bridge. They've actually created a gap by creating a hole in order to lower a bucket to be able to dig out the roadway and the debris that's laying on top of the bottom part of this truss. So it's going to be a tough and long road ahead. The governor did say that the timeline remains on track to reopen the Port of Baltimore by the end of May and open a deeper 35-foot channel by the end of this month. Reporting live in Dundalk, Mike Halgren, WJZ. All right, Mike, thank you. And WJZ and the United Way of Central Maryland have teamed up to provide relief in the wake of this tragedy. To learn more about how you can partner with us, scan that QR code on your screen or head to WJZ.com.